Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Lu Bu campaign. We pick it up for episode 2 from turn 3 in the winter season of 194. So, as you probably noticed on the thumbnail, uh, we have crossed out a few names and we're going to continue to crossing out names. Now, unfortunately, one of those names that's crossed out will not be in red because Huang Shao has died from his first turn fight with uh, Liu Bell's faction. That's okay. Uh, we're just not going to get his reward and not going to get the set reward. Uh, I really, really want to get to Hei sometime during this episode. So we're going to start moving our army down south. They're not that far away from us. I don't know if he's still on the field or not, but we're going to dash for the iron mine, which is where he most likely will be. To do so, we have to go through Cao Cao's territory. Now, ideally, we want to end the turn in our territory to get some healing. Uh, so we're probably going to go here. Now our men will bounce back to like a preset amount, probably like a quarter of the force. And that's okay. That's good enough. Uh, we can even get rid of these frontline units. I don't think we're going to need them. They're very high level. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Uh, because of their high level, we might want to keep them. Uh, the cavalry I really, really like. I'm not sure if I need the de infantry on the bull, so we might actually save us some money. Uh, we probably should have just deleted them uh, last turn, but since they are read it out, so you see it's not actually impacting our treasury because they're not actually here. So it's not like we wasted money uh, for a turn not deleting them, but we basically decided to get rid of them. We might decide to either recruit in a new general, let's say Deltran into the army, or Xun Yu actually would be even better. Because Xun Yu has brilliant trait, um, but he seems to be not getting along with Lu Bu. Del Tran will get along with Lu Bu. Uh, Dian Wei is also an option, but I think I kind of want Dian Wei to be here. Uh, doing an assignment for extra food, which he should have as a champion, uh, as a way to level him up. So some extra food production. We're currently negative just because of the seasonality. Uh, in the winter, we get less food production from all cities due to the you know weather. Uh, which should be the only issue that's causing us to lose uh, food. Uh, other than that, I think we should be fine. Actually, winter doesn't actually impact our food reserve. It seems like we're going to stay at negative... Huh, we're going to stay at negative one food. That is a concern. So Dan Wei being on that assignment is going to be key for us. Alright, we are probably going to add a general. We are talking about some... Bonuses. All right, we're fine. We got the labor recruiter, which should go on administrator, which we don't have. So it feels like the only thing we can do is probably add a general. Let's add Deltrain into the army for the family bus. Uh, you know, there's a buff for family members now they're they're married. Eventually, she'll be able to pick up Heavenly Grace, which is only one active use. It will cause immobilization of everyone around her for 15 seconds and also has the Wizard of the River debuff on top of that for melee evasion armor. Probably best for non-dueling. Uh, generals who are not willing to duel, you hold them in place and let Lu Bu charge them at the same time. Uh, that basically replaces her Wisdom of the River. Uh, it's only a one use, so I'm not sure if it's like better per se, but it is very strong uh, to hold the enemy general in place. Um, I would love to get another siege weapon on top, but I think we'll be fine with just that one. We're going to be getting rid of her archers because she doesn't have any skills that boost their damage or their fire arrow capability. This way it's easier to get her to be summoned back to heal and such. Uh, a trebuchet would be great here. And I think we are going to do it. It'll cost us 800, which we can definitely afford. And then if, if there's any chance we can give him general off the left, no, general off the right, uh, which actually we can cheese this out a little bit. We can do this. We can give him general of the left first for the recruitment cost discount. Let him re recruit this unit. And then we go switch him to general of the right, which reduces upkeep. And it doesn't actually hurt him because he's just thinking he got a different title. So if we look at his uh, satisfaction, right, there's a uh, recently hired a promotion event uh, effect. And if we switch them, he actually won't go down. 
right? Usually if you remove them, there's a removal from office, but switching doesn't hurt. So we can easily flip flop these two for the recruitment and the upkeep uh, discount on top of that. Because after recruiting, it's all about the upkeep of these units uh, for the siege weapon. Especially if he's going to get a lot of siege weapon, we're going to give him that title to use. And now Liu Bu's units are super expensive as well, but he is our uh, leader, faction leader, so he can't get any titles. So that's basically something we can't do for him. Um, pretty happy with this. We're just going to hover in place. Our momentum is going to help out with replenishment for a little bit. We're talking about 40%. These will bounce back and we'll continue into Cao Cao's territories. Not much we can do in terms of diplomacy. Cao Cao is usually very stubborn about peace deals. Yeah, he's not willing to sign a peace deal. And he has three counties left. We're not interested in wiping him out. Because if we're the one that kills him, a lot of his men won't join us. We want to keep sparing his men and give him the chance to join us. We're going to weaken him. Uh, we play take the farmland. We'll let him take our cities. If he wants to come take our city, he can have it. By having a capital city that we can't trade away or give to our vassal is actually a bit painful. Because we're trying to play with minimum land. Imagine us as a roaming mercenary hitman that is a feudal lord over potential vassals in the future. So that's kind of our ideal playstyle. Hopefully the diplomatic point penalty won't put too much of a you know issue with how we get vassals. Because it could also hurt our relationship with our vassal and they could just betray us. Which could be a pretty bad situation. Uh, but we're going to just basically count on it. All right, we're going to just continue for next turn. I don't think there's much we can do. Building's all taken care of. Let's continue. All right, Liu Bell want us to pay him for a non-aggression pack. No, thank you. We have a temporary, you know, alliance through the mercenary treaty, so no need for this. All right, so Yuan Han is helping Dad out with more war. Yuan Shu has declared war with Liu Bao down south. So by having the contract, we kind of tied Liu Bell to us. He can't do anything to us for 17 turns as long as we don't drop to zero, which we won't. All right, no one too interesting. We just want to quickly check for items. If there's no item situation, it doesn't really matter. We should often check for spies as well with the new turncoat mechanic. You can look for you know generals that you could potentially hire if we have the gold. Now, Guo Si is uh, one person we have to take down. And one way we can guarantee that we can eventually take him down is to take him into our faction, right? If we grab him into our faction in the future, give him a vassal, or not a vassal, like independence as a administrator, then we can guarantee to fight him. So this is a neat trick to grab these generals to make sure they stay safe. Um, so far, no other turncoat except for Guo Si. So we might actually save up to grab him and then summon him to our faction to make sure we can... Uh, fight him down the road We have a level up on Chen Gong, which is great. So seven units recovery That's a little less than a fourth 30 units, right? So we're talking about Yeah, close enough to a fourth. It's more than a fifth, which is six units um, We want probably resourcefulness so we can have flaming rocks on the tribuchet. So let's go down this way All right, we need to go through Chen uh, farmland to get over here so let's first peek out onto the road so it seems like we can't reach it to attack yet this turn but we might just want to march through then we don't actually have to take this farmland with Dan Wei dealing with the food situation over there uh, but if we don't go through it the problem is we can't Hmm, we might have to waste two turns here. Hold on, before we... Before we move... We might actually just want to... Hit attack. And we can't reach, but it's fine. That's as far as we can go. We'll just attack them next turn, and then move on the turn after. We should still have some points. I'm just worried about Hui's well-being, but it seems like they have calmed down the offensive. We get our first reform. So in the 194 star, every faction starts out with five free reforms. And ours is all in the red tree, which is decent. Uh, we want to obviously upgrade our free building, free tax collection. It's going to be vital to our economy. 
Getting Onyx Dragons is super good on this patch, but for us, it might not be necessary. 10% uh, replenishment is great, um, which is only one reform away. We might just get this first because we still have the level 2 one to build. And then mm, that might not take that long, actually. Right, two turns. So for efficiency, I think we're going to go with a tier 3 for now. Alrighty. Let's see if Salsal Sal changes his tone. A little bit. A little bit. But I'm never going to pay him for a piece. Liu Bei is interested in signing a non-aggression pack with me. I don't mind fighting him, to be honest. Right, so I don't think we need this. Alright, we're good. Let's just uh, continue. Alright, Liu Yao is asking us to make a payment for a non-aggression pack. No way. Alright, Tian Kai has been... Has been destroyed. Okay, so this is a vassal of Gong Sun Zan uh, in the northeast. Got destroyed probably by Yuan Tan or Yuan Shao. Or he died. Faction still there. Gong Sun Zan, Liu Bei, and Kong teaming up. Alright. We're gonna attack. Uh, this is a fight that we will fight manually, but I'll cut out. Uh, just to save a little time, it's going to be a very straightforward battle. We have siege weapons, open field fight against a bunch of useless units, and we have Lu Bu, so it's going to be a massacre. See you guys at the end. Alrighty. Didn't play it very smartly. Just charged in with Lu Bu. Lost his horse, took some damage, but we should heal up during the uh, turn in between. Uh, we don't need to raise. We just occupy for now. We can always trade these away. Uh, we increase the marquees, so the rank is gonna level up really quickly for Lu Bu just with all the prestige gains. Now we actually have administrator slot open. We have the grand director and the grand tutor also open. Uh, we can look to give these positions away. This one gives extra food, which is a little bit useless. This one gives extra experience and trade influence. This one's actually quite useful. And Xun Yu can probably be in this post for grand tutor. It would kind of make sense for his character as well. Uh, Del Chan would be a nice one as well, um, but uh, the only thing we have to consider is that the different classes would give different class satisfaction. So putting more strategists would give us more commerce income boost and strategist satisfaction increase. Uh, this would be peasantry income boost, which actually might be the best one for us. Um, we could swap. We could put him here and then put the chancellor position to Dian Wei. Which is the peasantry one anyways. Right, so so we could probably do this. It wouldn't affect satisfaction. And we'll give this position over to Dian Wei instead. Administrator probably should go to Zhang Liao. Um, because he's the... He's the um, but we can't... Hmm, we can't move him there, which is interesting. Uh, because he's on assignment, I think that's why. We need to get him off the assignment if we want him to be the administrator. We can invoke council in one turn, which we will do. And John L, we might just take him off of um, the assignment soon. Because he's here, he can't be in the city. So we might we don't want to cancel now because we want to get the cheap build. The not cheap, but like the faster build next turn, and then we'll swap him in. Uh, we have a lot of public order issues, which is totally fine. And what will happen is that we'll just summon the army of our generals, Dian Wei, Zhang Liao, Gao Shun, and they'll hunt um, some rebels for a few turns. It's going to be expensive to summon them out, but Zhang Liao is very strong when outnumbered, so I think he alone might be able to do a lot. Uh, he has the sword, which probably give it back to him. Couldn't trade it away anyways. Um, since you are going to become... Our administrator, we're going to give that to him as well. Alright, we're just going to heal up. 30% should be pretty much full healed. Alright, I think we got everything. We're going to run over there soon. 
we have six more turns before the contract expires. Uh, we got a f another assignment slot open. Uh, Xun Yu could get busy. Dan Wei could come out now that we have a lot of food production because we need him on the field for the rebel hunting. He could just go in for experience, even though he's not going to end up boosting anything. Just the fact that he can give us some level up experience gain, uh, it's good enough. All right, uh, we're good here. Lady Ban's on the field. Interesting that Cao Cao summoned his wife instead of himself again. Hmm. Okay, she's an excellent character. If we could snatch her, it would be really, really good. Uh, but we'll see. Let's just continue for now. We got a non-aggression pack offer from Wu Jing, who's actually offering to pay us a little bit. Um, we can negotiate. 1.6, we might actually... Oh, he's available to become vassal. Let's see. Personality does matter. We have to focus on this. So he likes to be in... Have big armies, made attacks before. So he's willing to fight, basically. Okay, doesn't say much about his willingness to become... Oh. It does. It says a lot about his willingness to become vassals. Let's see. What about per turn gold? Ninety four. So as long as it's more than nine, it's a much better deal. He's way down there, and I don't see us coming to conflict with them. So signing a non-aggression pack is totally fine. We have trade. Uh, we have an extra trade available. We didn't check in between turns. Uh, we should have done that. All right. So the rank up not only give us extra um, administrators and assignments also gives us extra trade which we should have taken advantage of except for there's no one around us who could trade with us all right that's uh, another thing we didn't consider now we're just gonna beeline into their territory because I need to see we'll go here we'll, we'll, go, we'll switch to March if I don't see anyone Actually, we can go all the way in and then switch to march for the extra movement. Alright, we scout as much as we can. Gongdu, but we don't see He Yi. He has a big army, but all useless units. I am willing to put my neck out here. Now, is he? that's not the city reinforcement range. So he's probably going to attack us just because he sensed weakness with our army size. But little does he know Lu Bu is going to crush him. All right, so we're going to pick up a lot of uh, fame and fortune. Gongdu's bonus is not so great. We're only talking about five military supplies. So kind of pointless, but he's on the list. we got to cross him out anyways. He Yi is hiding somewhere. If we wipe him out, we're going to go stare at this city or town until he summons himself. We'll keep killing generals till he comes out. Uh, might be a while. All right, we'll get this building started. We'll take him off duty. We'll summon these three generals to take care of rebellions, which will happen very next turn. We have 3,000 gold, which might not be enough to summon a lot of the armies. Dan Wei will cost 15. He will cost... Oof. Okay. So we can summon one first and then summon Zhang Nao next turn with the other army. So he will be free because I'm getting all rid of his entire retinue. He, I will keep the camp crusher. Even though everything's super discounted with Gongshun just because his background bonus is really good. 35% upkeep for a camp crusher and flying rider discount and 20% overall. So 55% for all the camp crusher and flying riders. Um, but Dan Wei is going to be cheaper to summon and cheaper to maintain because we can get rid of all that retinue. So Dan Wei is out on the field. Let's get rid of these guys. Alright. And then we'll put John L with him, and the two of them can probably take down the old turban army by themselves. Yep, one more turn for that. Goshun will sit pretty for a little bit longer. Alright, no one worth hiring. Still waiting for him to come back from assignment. And other than that. We can do invoke faction. Mission aborted. Mission issued. Assign any character to grant director. We can do this pretty easily. Upgrade administrator. Uh, settlement. Settlement upgrade is going to be a little rough. Um, move any character to a farmland. That's easy. We can do that just by summoning someone later. 
but not right away. Hmm. Let's quickly check diplomacy one more time with Tall Tall status. He's a yes now, which okay. So taking his food made him realize he is very weak because he just has the lumber yard and the pretty tall uh, city here. I believe in Chuan's usually yeah large city, so he doesn't have food. He's definitely negative food, and that's why he has willing to sign a peace deal with us. He can be a potential trade partner, and we can vassalize him no <laughs> that's asking for too much um i don't want to be a coalition partner but i don't want to fight him anymore for a while so he's willing to give us that the non-aggression pack do you have any items so we have pretty much no use for armor in this case because we're playing all legendary characters only mostly mostly i can't say only mostly we can't ask for cash because he's actually super rich. So we'll get a mix of both. So per turn wise, he's looking at 5,000 something per turn. It's because I think the AI's Hulk Hulk gets a large amount of gold per turn to offset his huge roster at the beginning of the game. Is the way the game kind of balanced him out. So that's why he's kind of loaded. Uh, should we just get 15? Oh, well, there's no there's no limit to the amount the AI is willing to give. Um, that's fine. I guess depends on how much this becomes off balance. He only has 9,000 gold here. All right, so that becomes too ridiculous for him. I think... Okay, that's a whole point. That's a whole point, 10%. All right, let's just take 25, and over here, we'll take six, ooh, 700, 750, uh, not 75, 750, 777, okay, that's too much, um, 55, 57. Okay, we're pushing it. That's the the boundary here. All right, so about seven thousand gold plus that. So we're looking at over ten k, which is sweet. Plus a trade deal, five that five hundred per turn, plus a non-aggression pack, for a peace deal of beating him down and all those names off our list. All right, if he wants to backstab us, it's okay too because. I don't mind losing territory. We're not looking to hold land. Alright, that extra gold does afford us the chance to recruit Gaoshun out if we want to. If we want to pay the Camp Crusher upkeep cost. It will be 55% off, so we're looking at about 120-ish, 120-something uh, per turn, which is fine. And then Gaoshun will have something to do earlier. Hmm. I think it's better to summon him next turn in this case. Save us a bit of extra gold. And we're looking at a fight during the end turn. We could put someone as the Grand Director to please these guys. Gaoshun would be an ideal person simply because he's a vanguard and we don't have a vanguard in these positions yet. Salary increase we can swallow. Alright, support from merchants. So extra trade influence should be extra income. Uh, five percent, five satisfaction for strategists. Very nice. All right, let's get this fight going. End turn. All right, as we predicted, the AI think they have a victory here, so they're coming out to fight us. Gondu is going to have his name crossed off the list, and maybe we'll get a few ancillary item as well. Uh, she has a pretty good weapon that we would love to have. And this is just the captain retinue, which is pretty weak. Uh, overall, the only strong units are Guardian of the Land and Horseback Huntsman, which is super annoying, but there's only 19 of them. We have siege weapons. Let's start fighting. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up in here. Uh, they're probably going to be charging at us, given the fact that we have a bunch of siege weapons. Uh, we'll back off just a little bit. Oftentimes, the AI are not seeing our units, and they're not charging. 
what we're gonna do is put the trebuchets right behind the crossbows. Uh, we don't have fire flaming shot on these yet. Mm. Uh, we really shouldn't actually put them in the same group just because the manual fire is going to be a little different for both of them. Do I want left right distribution? We probably don't. We probably want to put them on just one side. Or even even like a crossfire setup to give them like the option of going after one group or the other. Um, and then these guys will be on uh, intercept mission if the enemy cavalry or something charges these guys. Um, Lupu obviously way in the front. Dao Chan mm, decrease his cooldown. She could follow him, but he could get dangerous. Rather have her in the back. He will take part in the dangerous mission. So this is four. Honestly, she could go two. If she dies, we can always summon her back to heal. That's the whole reason we didn't give her a retinue. Deployable is pretty important. I'm going to protect these guys first. Fire patch. Ta tower can go up. Tower can start shooting way earlier. And then put them off to the side so they'll keep shooting as enemies go through. Alright, let's start with no front line. We just absorb the attention with Rubu. Gongdu wants to duel? No, he doesn't want to duel. Okay. They should be marching up. We just want to stop Gongdu. If they don't want to duel, we'll put the strategists a little bit in the back first. Just so they don't get picked off. And we will need to encourage him to come out. Encourage, you know. We want them in our range first. And then we will go distract them as they kind of, you know, stop. So we can just charge at these guys. These are the most annoying ones. Oh, he's going after our strategist. He's ignoring Liu Bu. Uh, what's his ability? We don't want to lose our horse here, so we got to be very careful. We really would love to distract their archers. Even though they're peasant archers, they would do quite a lot of damage. Ooh! Oh, we hit ourselves. Alright, there's no spear in the middle here. Which is what we're going to go for. And then if we can, we smash the ground. Perfect. Gondu is coming after us, which is perfect. Alright, we have to micro loop, but we don't want to lose our horse. If we lose our horse in here, we're doomed. Alright, we bumped him for some damage. Go back. Gotta hold them off a little bit. Alright, we can charge this. Peasants, no worries. Just because we're strategists doesn't mean we can't fight. We still have horse. They don't have horse. Oh, we're, we're peppering ourselves. Alright. Kill archers, kill archers. Even they should go kill archers. Oh, they're in our archer range, which is a bad sign. Alright, we will stay right there. Uh, go get Gongdu out of the way. Stop him from killing our wife and strategist is going after our wife what a what a man right all right smack him you two move out continue on the archer we will kill him pretty quickly because gondu is standing around for analyze weakness ah we missed that last swipe go get him Alright, we're exchanging fire, which is okay. We can lose some men. Not a big deal. Taking him off the list is a big deal. Keep our girl safe. Alright, we'll pull them out. Gondu is gone. Let's kill this healer. She doesn't have resiliency. She's level 1. So once we kill her, she's dead. Maybe we'll get that item to drop. They can just kill some peasants. Uh... Let's go wreck some uh, archers. P 
Peasant archers. Peasant archers. Mm, I don't want to charge this group, but we can charge the group after them, especially after they route. You go after that. There we go. We will come after them. Uh, make sure they're gone. Fire at the spear. Fire at this spear. There we go. She has a good weapon. Oh, she has a smash ability. Impressive. Alright, stick on him. Who stick? Okay. Come back. Stick on him. They're done over there. Uh, just come back. Go after these horseback archers. We need some speed to kill them. Actually, eh, it's okay. I don't need to slam the ground. I'm just going to chase after the general. The archers got them. These guys have no range block chance. Alright, stick on them. I mean, she keeps running into them, so I'm going to smash them. You guys are done. Stop shooting. Injuring your own general. That might be her last... Oh, we didn't hit her. I think she's about done with the next charge. And then we should win the battle. Everyone should be gone. All right, we don't need to chase. Oh, actually, we should chase. They might retreat back to the city. So we'll cut the till the end. See you guys then. Alrighty. Not a hard win. 35 loss versus 1388. And we got the name crossed off our list too. 33 fame and fortune. Gondu captured. Uh, we're not killing anyone, so we're just going to release. Even though we can never recruit him. Just keep him on the map for flavor. Uh, this is during the end turn, so there's no point to reset movement. We just get income here. And the healer we killed actually forced He Yi out to take over her retinue, which is perfect. Because we're here to cross his name off. Alright, lots of peace deal going on because the High Empire has switched hand. And Zheng Jiang has declared war on Liu Chong. And Gong Sun Zan has commanded Tian Kai's uh, new leader, Dong Zhao, to join a war with them. And Liu Bei's coalition becomes a military alliance. Uh, only between Liu Bei and Kong Rong. Seems like Gong Sun Zan had left the coalition and didn't join the alliance. Okay, and the separatists have declared war on Cao Cao. If Cao Cao gets destroyed by someone else, we might pick up some of his generals that we have released. So there's a good thing going on there. Got Gong Du's name crossed off on the list. Got paid for the mercenary contract. Alright, so we do have the Yellow Turban Rebellion happening in back in Chen. We will farm that. We got a level up on Chen Gong for hunting down all those uh, escaping troops. Picked up resourcefulness for flaming shot on the tribuches. Things are cruising along just great. Now Kai Yue is available. Not interested unless he has items. We got Defiant, which is a pretty decent trait. Alright, a few things. John L is going to move into the administrator position. Uh, is his mission done yet? That's my other question. What is his mission? Move any troop to Chen. That's a super easy one. Hmm. This is all this requires is summoning like Gaoshuan real quick. Move him there, and then we can even summon him back. Or Zhang Liao. But Zhang Liao needs to be here. Zhang Liao needs to be in this fight. We have a lot of gold because of all the contract and stuff. So I guess we could splurge. We could move Gaoshuan here. Move him into the farmland. Finish the mission. Get growing might. Oh, that's a. Oh no, that's because the units. That's not even that mission. This is. I'll destroy Cao Cao. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if I want to do this. Alright, we got a lot of stuff going on. This is the one we're going for. Support from artisans, construction time decrease, satisfaction from sentinels. We'll get rid of these uh, mounted troops. We'll keep his camp crusher. Uh, they cost... I mean, they don't cost that much to recruit, but he doesn't have the level for them yet. He can recruit flying riders pretty easily. 
cost about a thousand here. Camp Crusher, I believe, is level five or six. Level, well, four. That's not. Oh, he's close. Um, but they only cost sixty-six per turn, so we're gonna get rid of this guy. And what we're gonna do with him is we're gonna actually just manually move him back to join that army. Uh, for this battle here, we're just gonna summon Zhang Lao for the task. And this group will use the retinue for the fight. It'd just be a simple delegate win. Zhang Lao even have night battle on him. Alright, we were not able to wipe him out. Philosopher, this we can execute, guys. This we can execute. So we're gonna trespass to kill them off, or we can just wait till they come back. They're only gonna be decreasing their um, public order by standing there. We can get rid of these retinues. Pull them back to the city. Having them on the field and not in our commandery actually help us a little bit with public order evening out, uh, which very favorable thing for us. I think it's still Kai Yue. Yep, it's still Kai Yue. We got a philosopher on top of our concubine and our increasing amount of satisfaction for momentum. Although this one's starting to build up to decrease. Um, what will likely happen is that when our daughter come of age, we'll give her a philosopher. We'll keep the concubine on herself. John L can move into wait, John L can move into this position now that his mission is done. Perfect. Um, we're not looking to recruit any troops right now, so we can keep that open. Alright, so we are going to tier three. That's fine. Gulfstream will come over very soon. We don't have any characters for assignments. Hopefully we capture some more. But most importantly, we can finish our He Yi, which is what we came here to do. Now, it seems like his army is in the Iron Mine, which is a little problematic. But in a sense, the Iron Mine is a very difficult fight to fight. We don't want to give the one turn for Gongdul to recover. Um, we do have siege weapons. I think we can do it. It might be a rough fight just because the towers and the... Units inside are not that bad. We'll do night battle. And uh, we'll start the fight ourselves. Alright, we're loaded up in here. Um, pretty standard Iron Mind fight. Uh, there's really no good way to do this. These towers overlap pretty hard. This is probably the only place for us to assault them directly if they don't come out. I don't know if they come out or not. But even if they come out, we can fight from over here. Uh, we want we have flaming shot now. That is the one pro. Uh, being level two tribuches, though, I doubt the accuracy is going to be great. We'll put them all the way up. Uh, if the towers start hitting our units as we have to charge up to intercept their troops, uh, that is okay too. We put them a little bit back just to give room to these guys. All right. Archers, archers can stay in the back for now. Um, they're going to be in defensive role until the tower goes down. We can always use them to run up to destroy towers if that, you know, comes down to that. Mm, we'll still do like two, one, three. Hide these boys. Four. We pull stand in the front. All right, call these five. Call him six. We don't have anything really useful. I guess we could put some... Yeah, because they do have cavalry. If they'll let me first put it somewhere, and then I can... Yeah, it's hard sometimes to put it near the edge. Mm, we can hide him as well. Actually, I don't want to hide him. We want to show them we have loot pool. Uh, the fire is kind of useless. So, let's start. I don't know if they're... They're, they're coming out. Okay, uh, then it's a different fight. It's a very different fight. Does he want to duel? No. Why are we hitting the units in the back? This units literally in the front. He has a bow. 
He's shooting Lu Bu. I will hide. Ah, it's a composition bow. It's very bad. 10 ammo. Four man. War glaive. He picked up the weapon that the healer had. He has an armor boost. Judgment attack. 9.4k damage. That's actually pretty strong. We definitely need to use our analyze weakness. We'll let them try to charge up against this. We have a pretty strong line. Uh, their cavalry is trying to flank. We have cavalry to intercept. Lu Bu to intercept. We'll go bump into them in the in the forest. If they want to flank us, they can try. But our crossbow is really good in this type of terrain. All right, we're going to take a lot of damage from the archers, which we should send our cavalry to kill. Rebo is going to hunt them down. Okay, we're taking a lot of damage. Oh, if they want to charge front, they can. If not, we'll intercept. We both have them wiped out already. So we got to protect our siege weapon for as long as we can. They'll take some damage. Uh, they'll rally back. That's the thing. we got to stick on them. Ooh, the armor increase. Can we go give them the armor decrease on the leader? All right, they're getting pelted. All right, we got the armor decrease. Kill him. Kill him for the list. Archers, start firing. Get the fire going. Get them. Cooldown decrease for Lu Bu. Not that we're using it yet. He is going down. We can free up the cavalry to try to reach their range units. Alright, He is running away. Alright, sword. Archers. Oh, archers. Actually, archer is fine. Archer's got this. Alright, go chase. The cavalry's gone. We'll go chase him. I think this frontal part is one. Just got charged at them. We still have the tribuches. Alright, we're just gonna kill him. We'll definitely take a lot of archery damage from the towers. And that's fine. Because our mission here is pretty much done at this point. Oh, no. Still hit those. Come on, finish them off so we can help your troops. And get out of all the tower range. Just one good charge. There we go. Go back, go back. Three on him. Just chase the archer for a little bit. Perfect. I think we win when we hit this unit. Make them route, we win. Come on. There we go. All right. Got our name list done. All righty. So we got the yellow turban list crossed out. All right. Fame and fortune. Captured He Yi. Uh, War glaive. Uh, we're still keeping, I don't know, should we still keep the Yellow Turbans alive at this point? Their faction is pretty much done. No one can recruit them. Uh, I mean, people can in you know, World Betrayed, but it's kind of bugged out. So I feel like maybe this is the end to He Yi's career. Uh, Yellow Turbans don't count because we can never recruit them. Let's just say that. And we'll take the War Glaive off his hand. So we could give the Iron Mine over to Liu Bell. But I'd rather keep it myself at this point, just because we have such a low base income at this point. Eventually, we'll be handing things out, and we do need some territory to hand out to potential uh, administrators in the future. We can't hand out our capital. Uh, so we're going to occupy ourselves. And then Gongdu takes over. Uh, if we capture him again, we'll execute him as well. It's level 2. They have a forge, a yellow turban forge, which is weird now because I don't know if yellow turban forge produces item or not. Used to be it's really good to get a yellow turban forge because they give extra replenishment and uh, industry income. Now the normal forge for all the Han factions not only gives industry income percentage, but also give items, which is pretty much their big draw. And in terms of our greatest warrior hit list, 
we got something very vital to Lu Bu. We got the recovery ability. It's a passive ability that heals you every single second you're on the battlefield. Super, super good. Uh, it's a shame he died on turn one. Nothing we could do about that. Uh, I'm not the type to like to mod stuff to make things happen for you in the game. I'll just accept it. We lost 15 prestige and some extra experience. I'm not going to sweat over it. Uh, unit's going to heal up nicely since we're at full momentum at the point. So 50%, everything's maxed healing. Uh, everyone should heal up in a turn or two. And we'll head our way towards their town and their farmland. And Oh, they have a lot of territories. So Jiangxia, we can hand over to our vassal lord. Giving Liu Bao land actually messes him up because he has the new vassal playstyle. He has a governance to how many territory he can have. So giving him land, I don't think is actually a good thing for him. So we'll continue to serve out this mercenary contract. Uh, elsewhere, I think we're pretty stabilized. Mm, we're not super rich, but we're doing okay. Mm, just a quick check of the situation. 1.4. Mm, he still doesn't think he's weak. I'm not going to mess with the prince. He also doesn't have anything we really want. Uh, maybe just money. And we'll give him one food now that we have plenty of food. He seems to be lacking it. Hmm. That's a pretty big jump. 84. All right, uh, 84 per turn. And then Liu Bei. See, Liu Bei is probably our next target. We can force him into an awkward situation where he's in an alliance and he has to break a deal to fight us. That's not a bad way to do it. Um... We can also offer him one food, going to food diplomacy here. Oh, he is poor. Uh, we'll still take this deal. Most likely what will happen is that we will, after finishing the mercenary contract with Liu Bell, move our force over and enter into some sort of mercenary contract with someone fighting Liu Bei. And then we'll get that excuse to fight him and also make a friend at the same time. And our next goal, obviously, is the five tiger generals, which Liu Bei, uh, not Liu Bei, but we want Zhao Yun, right? Fatigue immunity is also pretty key. Uh, I don't think it's as key as recovery because recovery is just pretty broken. We can always heal. And as, on, as long as we're on the horse, we can run out, heal up and get back into the fight. Um, so we're pretty happy with where we are. We think we can just go to next turn. Yeah, I'm hoping to get more legendary characters to show up in our pool. Let's just continue. Ah, the bandit queen herself has declared war on us. That's very good because she can give us the poison blade ability, which is three little daggers we can throw in the fight that does damage and poison effect. Uh, we'll summon our army back. We'll probably take the town and then run back up um, because we don't actually have to keep fighting them we, as long as we have enough fame and fortune to outlast the 20 turns or whatever amount of turns that we have left we can kind of just ignore the rest of the contract all right Zheng Jiang has declared war on us not the smartest move by her uh, Kai Yue and Kai Liang the brothers are showing up one at a time leaving Liu Bao's faction to join us okay that relationship is friends it just formed come on Dianwei you're on our side now stop being friends with Cao Cao alright but I wonder let's say if we send Dianwei out onto battlefield and then Cao Cao dies do we heal because we're friends on opposite side typically when a friend die you heal that would be an interesting scenario to play out no, we don't want to uh, trespass, so we want to go around the, the road. We'll just go pick them up. Who should lead? 
No one has reached. Dan Wei's gonna have it first, two levels away. He's three levels away. Alright, so we have Dan Wei. Uh, the military supply, a huge drop because of the fact that they merge and also it's because it's winter. Um, that's fine. We'll bounce back. We'll go take a peek. See what's going on over here. Probably nothing. Right, so if that's the case, we'll take the turn to heal in our territory and then we'll wipe it out uh, next turn. Uh, other than military supply, Chen has a building slot available. We don't have any generals to do anything. Technically, we would want a land development for extra food and peasantry income. A uh, temple for public water is kind of excessive at this point. Yeah, let's get land development. It's expensive to build, as a reminder, but we are trying our best with our... Administrator dropping it by 27% and uh, we don't have an extra assignment. So that's all the discount we get. So we'll kind of balance it out a little bit, uh, but it's not cheap. Uh, try not to build too much. Mm, hold on. Conversely, we can give up on the income structure here because eventually we can get rid of it and we can build forge instead, which will just give us items, silver tier items. Silver tier items or... Steady income of peasantry and food. Ah, let's do steady income. We can find the the forge here, which actually makes some sense because we have a iron mine here. It's also super expensive to build this, not only because of that, but because there's a 20% uh, reform discount that we can pick up later. Um, still have no good character, so we're just going to take another turn because I think everything is good. I doubt there's going to be much change to diplomacy. The only thing we should have checked every turn is actually spy, which we've been forgetting. Have to remember that we have some cash now. Hmm. This is a deal that I don't know if I should sign. That's the thing. Alright, let's take a peek at the spy. Uh, Guosi is gone as a turncoat. No one's willing at this point. Okay, so we're going to wait till some relation. We just check every turn in case they fire a general, remove one from office, and there's an opening. We can definitely try to jump in at that time. Uh, let's just continue for now. Ma Tung wants our philosopher. There's nowhere we're letting that go. So just reject. All right, Sun Tse declare war on the High Empire. Interesting choice. And uh, Gao Gan, his uh, vassal, his nephew, is joining into a war. Uh, Xue Li, he's down south, has been killed. Xue Bi has taken over for him, his son, I guess. Wu Jing is now dead. Okay. Wu Jing Hu takes over, and Wu Jing Hu dies right away. And Li Chao takes over. Seems like the Wu family is dying. Uh, we want both. Uh, we can afford to lose 10 fame and fortune. 1,000 gold and uh, refined or exceptional item brown stallion that's a good item um drawn out levels up we'll pick up this uh not routing stronger enemy this will, will make him super strong as like a single unit because um basically the ai will think this army is weak uh, once the supply bounce up they will have um no longer attritioning so that should be okay not a big deal uh, we'll end with this fight here. Seems like He Man is on the field. Uh, we don't know his items, um, but we could fight him. It's, it's optional just because we already hit our list. Uh, let's pick up a reform. So last turn we went for that because we maxed it out. We might be tempted to go for that because we don't need much replenishment given that we have high momentum. So we're just going to keep going for higher tier free income, uh, which is something we can enjoy building here. All right. I think we're just going to end our episode with this town fight and show off Lü Bu with momentum, uh, with recovery. Just to attack. So, the yellow turbans um, retinue oh, is a lot worse here. <laughs> it's really good in Mandate of Heaven. 
they have these uh, unbreakable units if you're playing on Mandate of Heaven, the 182 start. But I guess on the 194 start, it's pretty bad. Uh, we're just going to pop in here, do a quick fight, just to show off his new ability. Alrighty, uh, we're here attacking a town. Usually these are pretty hard with the amount of towers, but we got siege weapons and we got loot bolt. So we're going to pick one of these side doors where you have less towers to deal with, let's say this one. Uh, we'll line up our siege weapons. They'll probably charge out. Um, we'll have loot bolt charge in as well because we have recovery now. We can play pretty reckless. We'll let just these guys pick up some experience. Now, Archer Militias, we're probably going to dump later on, so we might just put them in the back uh, to just arc over the siege weapons for some uh, damage when they get close. Cavalry can just hover. They're already pretty high level. Uh, they don't have any cavalry coming out, so maybe just a fire puddle like right here. Can I put it closer? I had it closer, and then it's gone. Uh, these things are impossible to place. There we go. Okay, that's pretty much as close as we can get. And uh, generals, we're going to pull them back over here. They will just rest up. So Liu Bu has recovery now. 19 healing every second. Doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's broken. You're basically always full health in any fight. Because you can just run away. You know, you're on the red hair. You have super fast horse. 90 speed. 123 in game, right? No one's going to catch you. You're just going to run away, heal, charge right back in, charge right back in. And uh, we'll let our siege weapons pick up some experience first. Because they're going to be pretty critical going forward. Uh, so we'll let them have some fun. And then we will charge in. There's no, there's no spear units. Alright, that's our cue. Who cares about arrow towers that hit for like a thousand? Uh, it doesn't they don't hit it for a thousand anymore? But they used to hit for a thousand damage per shot. That was insane. The good old days of just the release game. We just want to kill the range units. Charge through. Make sure the range units can't hit us. Now, obviously, you don't heal when you're fighting or under fire, right? You need to get out to heal. All right, just gonna charge in. And once he gets in there, everyone's scared. It'll be over. So not only do we have insane replenishment outside of the battle, we have insane healing inside the battle now too. So at any f end of any fight, let's say like we finish this fight and he's missing a huge chunk of his health, instead of just ending it, you can just let the timer continue. As long as they have, you know, units routing, then you can just heal up standing there. But not that we need that, because we have 40% or 50% replenishment outside. That's it, right? Anyone recover? Oh, okay. If anyone recovers, we'll just let our siege weapons have some fun, get some levels. This trebuchet needs some levels really badly. But they have a hard time hitting units. They're not like the crossbows. Yeah, crossbow like, swipes across. It's like really deadly. Do we win? Oh, they bounce back. And they bounce back. It's okay. The Siege Weapon can have fun with that one. We can have fun with this one. We're not even using this ability. They never stay. Maybe when Deltran has her immobilizing ability, they'll stay. But yeah, that's the fight. That's the recovery on Lu Bu. Uh, in the end, we'll have so many skills. If we get like Blazing Roar, Poison Blade, all sorts of stuff. Stock. Stock is a passive, but still, pretty crazy. Alrighty. We'll keep this town. Now the yellow turbines build it pretty nicely for us with the forge, which means we can just kind of convert them to our own forge uh, once we get a small city, of course. So a few upgrades needed here. Might be a bit expensive. We might want to move John out over here as administrator. Okay, state workshop. We can just convert this. Conversion costs don't scale with building costs, so we don't pay extra, which is pretty great. Uh, we might just do that very soon, but we're going to end our episode. Uh, we'll come back. Uh, we're probably going to ignore He Man. Now, it's likely he come and attack the town and take it back, so we might not even invest much here. Um, 
which is totally fine. We have enough fame and fortune to last us a while. I don't know if Zheng Jiang is going to throw a huge troop to come here. If she does, we can let her. Then we lose our capital, and we can move, the capital will automatically shift over here. So that might be our plan. Our plan might be to stay around and fight He Man and let Zheng Jiang expand into our territory and pull our units out, go south. So we don't have to have our capital stuck over here, which we don't like. And we can have more of an industrial capital here. So we'll see th how things go. Uh, we got Gongdu and He Yi off our list. Hopefully we can get Zheng Jiang off our list next. And once this contract ends, we'll try to get a new one against Liu Bei so that we can pick up fatigue immunity from Zhao Yun. So see you guys next time. Bye.